Antibiotics can be incredible tools for fighting bacterial infections, but if we use them too much, things change. MRSA stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a type of bacteria that has developed strong resistance to most antibiotics, and it's becoming more of a threat all the time. Not only are we seeing an increase in cases of MRSA, but other strains of bacteria are becoming more resistant to antibiotics. How does this happen, and is there anything we can do to stop antibiotic resistance? I'm Science Mom. And I'm Math Dad. Today, we're learning about antibiotic resistance. So, funny, true story. We just got noticed that the day that we're supposed to be teaching this class, our power is going to be out. We're not going to have any power. And because of where we live, we don't have the option of like doing a hotspot on our phone and having a good enough signal to live stream. So we're pre-recording this just for you. We're going to still talk about antibiotic resistance though, which is a pretty cool topic. And look at this picture. This is why our power is going to be out because the power line near our neighborhood, someone crashed a car into it, I think and it's kind of like hanging on with cables. <laughs> so they're gonna I, I don't know what's holding this thing up. They're gonna replace it tomorrow. All right, let's talk about antibiotic resistance. Remember last time we mentioned that there was a huge change in outcomes for surgery and just the way that we handled diseases when we discovered antibiotics. Before, the, before about the 1940s, surgery was pretty risky because if things became infected after surgery, the chance of survival was pretty low. But after the antibiotics were discovered, the chance of death from infection got much lower because antibiotics could actually target and fight the bacteria. So be before antibiotics, there was no such thing as routine surgery. No, there, <laughs> surgery it, it was, was only for emergencies. It was really. always, yeah, an emergency, something that could be life-threatening. So, so far we have vaccines that could prevent you from getting sick at all. And then we've got antibiotics which can help you to overcome an illness. And if you combine those two, then we, we see that the life expectancy is going way yes. up. That, that's why death from infectious disease has really decreased in this century. <laughs> that doesn't mean that we don't still have it. There still are infections that antibiotics can't handle and um, it, it can be more complicated than that. But antibiotics have made a big difference. And the reason that they work, we talked last time about penicillin and how there is an enzyme you know, a protein that has a job in bacteria, this enzyme makes the cell wall. And if you give penicillin to this enzyme, it's like it fits perfectly in this little spot right here. And then the enzyme is, is blocked up and it's not going to do its job. So that's how penicillin works. And that that job was holding this cell wall of the bacteria together. That's right, putting the cell wall together. So that's how penicillin works. But different, different bacteria can evolve ways to get around penicillin. Mm. So here's the basics of how antibiotic resistance works. Bacteria are going to have some variety in their population, and normally resistance to antibiotics is not gonna be a common ability. But if you wipe out all of the other bacteria, it's and then you leave one that's resistant, pretty soon they all become resistant. Oh, because the only the resistant one is left over and it's going to it's keep, gonna keep dividing. Keep dividing and multiplying and take Ooh. over. So this little cartoon here, what we got most of them. What's the worst that can happen? This is the worst that could happen. <laughs> Our weapons are useless now. Oh no. This is <laughs> the sad reality of what happens when and when bacteria become resistant. But how exactly does this happen? Well, there are a couple different ways. So back to this analogy where we saw this enzyme and penicillin right here fits perfectly in this enzyme. Well, what if our bacteria decided, you know what, we're gonna build an enzyme that has a new shape and instead it's gonna look like this. Would penicillin fit oh, in this molecule? No, it would not. It wouldn't. And so this bacteria would be resistant to penicillin because now, it's developed a new shape for its enzyme, penicillin no longer fits. So that's one way that a bacteria can develop resistance. But what if the bacteria had a pump in its membrane and anytime penicillin tried to go in, it just spit it back out and said, get out of here, we're not even letting you in the cell. 
That's another way that bacteria could become resistant. Mm. There are lots of different ways that a bacteria could keep this right here from happening. Make sure that the penicillin doesn't fit into that enzyme. And one way would be to develop another enzyme whose main job would be to chew up penicillin and just digest it and get rid of it. Oh. So those are some of the ways that bacteria can become resistant. Sneaky and when, bacteria. When they do, it's a big problem. And one of the strains of bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics that you'll hear the most about is MRSA. MRSA? MRSA stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So staph is a very common type of bacteria. It's got a really round shape and it's very, very small. And when we say very small, we mean so small that a single white blood cell is this big. So oh, that wow. green blob is a white blood cell and the little red kind of colored purple. This is not, you know, in real life, they're not colored purple, but we've colored them on this, this micrographic, microscopic image. That's how small they are. Staph can cause skin infections. And when it causes a skin infection, it's very painful. The whole area gets red. There's a lot of pus. But the dangerous thing about a staph infection is that this type of staph, sometimes the body can't get rid of it, and it's resistant to pretty much all the antibiotics we have. Oh no. So MRSA is a very dangerous type of infection that you do not want to get. But it's actually, staph is a really common bacteria, and surveys have estimated that about 1%, 1 to 2% of the population of healthy individuals already carry MRSA on their body. Mm. So there could be MRSA in your nose or on your skin right now, but if everything is balanced and you have other bacteria there that are competing with it and you have a, a good immune system that is strong, you don't even know you have it. So are you saying then that if you then took an antibiotic and wiped out your good bacteria, you'd actually be endangering yourself worse? It possibly, but also what I'm saying, and this is kind of an important point, is just because there's a pathogenic bacteria somewhere, that doesn't mean it's going to cause disease. Oftentimes, our, our bodies are complex, and oftentimes it's like there are multiple things that have to come together before that happens. So MRSA is actually a somewhat common bacteria that you can find in lots of different places, but it's most common in hospitals because of the abundant use of antibiotics in hospitals. Uh. The more antibiotics are around, the more likely that we'll develop bacteria like MRSA that are resistant to those antibiotics. So you don't want to go just hang out in hospitals just for fun? That... Well, you don't want to overuse antibiotics. and. Okay. Yeah, let's fill this out real fast. All right, so staph is a common bacteria present in many healthy people. MRSA is a strain of staph that has developed a number of methods for resisting? Resisting antibiotics. Okay. Like penicillin and methicillin. Methicillin is another type of antibiotic that staph is resistant to, and that's where the M comes from, methicillin-resistant, gotcha. Staphylococcus aureus. All right, these bacteria secrete an enzyme that... Inactivates. Inactivates the protein, okay. So there are lots of different ways that a bacteria can develop resistance. This is how MRSA has developed resistance. They also have different proteins mm -hmm. in their cell wall that don't bind to the antibiotic. Scientists are in a virtual arms race to come up with new antibacterial agents before the current antibiotics are no longer effective. This is actually a really big deal right now because we've developed different antibiotics and the ones that we developed first, they have the most types of bacteria that have become resistant. And we're developing new antibiotics slower than the bacteria are becoming resistant. And that means it's super important for all of us to know that there are certain things that you can do that will make bacteria more resistant and things you can do that will prevent that from happening. One of the biggest is if you are sick with a virus, you go to a doctor, or you're miserable, and he says, or she says, oh, you're sick with a terrible virus, you should not ask for an antibiotic. And if your doctor says, you're sick with a virus here, I'll prescribe you an antibiotic so that you'll feel better, you should say, whoa, 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 an antibiotic isn't gonna do anything against a viral infection. I'd rather not take it. 
So overprescribing antibiotics, that's one thing that has caused us to be in this issue where we have resistant strains, but another one is not taking them correctly. So let's go through and match these up. Okay, so washing hands frequently, that can only be good. That's gonna take out bacteria. So I'm gonna say that that decreases the likelihood of antibiotic resistance. Not finishing prescriptions of antibiotics. That's gonna increase. Oh, because that's gonna, that's only gonna kill the weak bacteria and it will leave the stronger bacteria alive, which is yeah, but if, if you if you have a course of antibiotics, it's really important to finish the entire prescription because if you stop partway to partway through, you might have gotten rid of most of the bacteria, but you've exposed them all to this antibiotic. And then if you stop, there is a higher likelihood that they could evolve resistance. All right, what about staying home from school or work when sick? That is just good advice all the time. That will decrease the likelihood of that bacteria, if it is a bacterial infection, being passed around to other people. The, the more bacteria out there, the more it's going to spread and mutate. Yep. yep. All right. Get plenty of sleep. So not treating a viral infection with antibiotics. You just mentioned that one. But yes. And that one's, that's one of my pet peeves because a couple times when, when I've been sick or when I've had my kids sick, um, I've had, I've had physicians say, oh, it's, it's viral, but if you want an antibiotic, I'll write you a prescription. And no, don't give me a prescription for an antibiotic if it's a viral infection. Those doctors know better. All right, forgetting to take several doses of an antibiotic. Ooh, that would be bad because that would be like stopping you, it early. Yes, you really want to be sure if you if you are on an antibiotic for an infection, you want to make sure you take it as prescribed. And then <laughs> demanding an antibiotic after you've been told you have a viral infection. Do not do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Real fast note, we have Biology 2 starting this next semester, and you can sign up now. We will be exploring genetics, heredity, and evolution. So how did how do bacteria actually gain this ability to become resistant? We're going to be going into way more detail on that with Biology 2, and it's a fascinating topic. I'm, I'm super excited. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I have to give a first question here without showing that next slide. Oh because um, I, I wrote the answer on the slide and I forgot to uh, block it off. <laughs> so here is the question for you. What does MRSA stand for? What does MRSA stand for? Do you remember? <laughs> we'll give you two seconds. See if you can remember what it stands for. The answer is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It was not named after its first patient, Mr. Sawyer. But it does look like Mr. Sa, doesn't it? <laughs> it kind of does. Yeah. All right. So that, that first one was, was fiction. But what about this one? Fact or fiction? About 1% of the population has been colonized with MRSA bacteria, but doesn't even know it. Got 100 people there, and one of them's like, wait a minute, I have MRSA? And we've seen that happen before, haven't we? Where people could be a carrier for a disease, but not even realize that they have it. And in this case... This is, this is true. Surveys consistently show between 1% to 2% of the population have been colonized with MRSA, but don't have any symptoms. They don't have any infections. It's just living there on the surface of the body. All right, fact or fiction. The most likely place to get MRSA is the hospital. And this is my favorite joke in all of the notes. You'll be pleased to hear that our hospital is low on staff. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Staphylococcus aureus, a short name for that bacteria is staph. You know, you, you don't want to go to places that are short on staff, but in th this case, you most assuredly would, would rather stay away. Um, a hospital is actually one of the most likely places to encounter MRSA just because of the prevalence of antibiotic use in the hospital. And also, if someone gets a bad MRSA infection, that's where they'll go. So this is unfortunately true. Is that the right answer over here? Yeah. Yeah, it was fact. Okay. Just, yep, they're just, all true. Just checking. All right. Which statement about MRSA is true? So MRSA is a type of staph infection. MRSA will cause severe skin infections whenever it's present. MRSA is one of the largest viruses and there is no treatment for MRSA. Which statement is true? <laughs> I, there could be, could there be more than one true statement here? Yep. So MRSA is a type of staph infection. That is true. Staphylococcus aureus is what the SA stands for. That's right. Will it cause severe skin infections anytime it's present? No. So that is, is false because remember some people carry MRSA and don't even know it. They don't have symptoms. So just, They're just sometimes. Perfectly healthy. Right. MRSA is a large virus. It's oh, a bacteria. Bacteria. 
there is no treatment for MRSA, that is also false because there are treatments. It's much more difficult to treat because it's resistant to so many different types of antibiotics. But well, there are there are some antibiotics that can be given and there are some other treatments as well. Okay, which actions will contribute to an increase in antibiotic resistant bacteria? So taking each dose of an antibiotic is directed, stopping a course of antibiotics as soon as the symptoms are gone, requesting antibiotics every time you are sick, or giving a healthy person antibiotics. Giving a healthy person antibiotics, not a good idea. That can lead to an increase in antibiotic resistance bacteria. Requesting antibiotics anytime you're sick, also, mm. uh -uh. and then stopping a course of antibiotics as soon as the symptoms are gone. That's also something you do not want to do. Our only one that does not contribute is this one. That's right. My guess is stopping the antibiotic too soon is probably the most common mistake people make. And yeah, we just don't want to do that. We're helping out the bacteria when we do that. All right, last question. Penicillin used to be an effective treatment for many types of infections, but now it's ineffective against several of them. What caused this? Ooh, so what, what actually caused this? Well, it, people's bodies became used to the antibiotic, so it stopped having an effect. Certain bacteria developed new abilities, which made them resistant to the antibiotic, or the penicillium fungus went extinct. What accounts for the waning effectiveness of penicillin? And it is true that penicillin is not as effective against as many diseases, as many bacteria now, as it once was. The answer is not that the penicillium fungus went extinct, because it did not. It's alive and well and very common. And the answer is not that people's bodies became used to the antibiotic, so it stopped having an effect. The answer is that certain bacteria developed new abilities that made them resistant. And that is called evolution, which is what we'll be learning more about in biology too. So we, we have these amazing antibiotics. I really hope that we will do our part to not help the bacteria become stronger and more resistant to them. So we have our final quiz show this Friday. I hope you guys will study and get ready for that because it's going to be a lot of fun. And also we'll be showcasing art from the most wanted micro posters. So send in your art if you'd like to have it shared. And last but not least, don't forget to fill out the survey that we put in asking for your feedback on our course. How can we improve? We love teaching and spending time with you learning science and we would love to hear your input on how we can make our next courses even better. So work hard, grow smart, and we'll see you next time.